Are you struggling with finding the right tutorial for your Spark and Databricks certification? Then this step-by-step -step guide will definitely help you to find and choose the right course and it will increase your chances to clear the certification exam. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step guide to pass your Databricks Spark certification exam. This particular video is for the ones who are completely new to Spark and wants to learn Spark and then sit for the Databricks certification exam. But if you have like working experience with Spark and uh, you know about the Spark architecture and everything, then watch my this video because it has uh, explanation and guide uh, and the steps that you should follow to, to sit for the exam. I have divided this video into two subsections. First one, I'll cover what is Spark and what is Databricks. The second section will cover how should you prepare for Spark and uh, Databricks certification. So I'll, uh, in the second uh, section, I'll cover all the name of the courses and books and the course materials that you should follow uh, a weekly guide as well will be provided to you uh, so be there till the end of this video what is apache spark Sp apache spark is an open source framework that is it is a free framework which is designed to quickly process big data workloads the workloads or the data that is is huge in size uh, the data that you generate by uh, watching YouTube videos or, um, or the Twitter uh, data. These kind of data are very huge in size and to uh, we, the term we use for these kind of data is big data. And to process this big data quickly, Spark was introduced and it was introduced as an open source. So anyone can download it and start using it by open source, the meaning of open sources. Again, Spark um, is used for various purposes like batch and stream processing, machine learning, graph processing, and many more. And the reason Spark is uh, faster is because it distributes the data processing onto multiple computers. And it does its processing in memory. That's why the the spark uh, processes big data faster you will understand the meaning the uh, various attributes of spark when you start a course on spark and start learning in about spark right now i'm just giving you a brief uh, description of spark just to get you started so you also uh, heard the term data bricks so now what is Databricks and how these this Databricks and Spark is related? So let's understand first Databricks. So Databricks is a platform service, which means it provides services on its platform. And uh, people take the advantage of Spark without the need of spinning up any instances on machine. So if you are going to install Spark, you have to install Spark, you have to install Hadoop and you have to manage everything when you are doing it on-prem. But uh, Databricks provides you a platform, a ready platform where Spark is already uh, there. You just need to start a cluster and start using Spark on notebook. So it is a ready-made platform you can say and not just only spark it hosts various other softwares as well like dbt delta lake ml flow so these kind of softwares and many others as well can be uh, used uh, on databricks and uh, databricks this company was founded by the original creators of apache spark so um, who created apache spark the creators have started this Databricks community or company. And Databricks is also one of the major contributors to Spark. 
uh, along with other big contributors. Databricks is also another contributor to open source Apache Spark. So this is the meaning of Databricks. And uh, Databricks hosts this exam, which we are saying uh, for Spark, so that uh, recruiters or um, companies can hire her, uh, employees uh, by seeing this certification and employees also can showcase that I have uh, cleared this uh, examination. I have the knowledge of Spark and you can take my interview. So this kind of um, statement, um, this particular certification gives away to recruiters. So, so now uh, when you are going to start uh, for this exam or you are going you, know, you are thinking about taking this exam the, the it is very confusing to create a plan so it is very confusing like how should i start so this came to me as well this was uh, it took me around um, two days three days to think about like where where should i start so here I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide to plan your uh, 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 plan your study and a weekly plan as well. So let's uh, see what are the major steps that you should uh, start with to basically hit your goal. The step one I feel is you need to first analyze which kind of learning suits you. So like some people learn better by watching a video course say or by reading a some uh, learn better by reading a related book or some like me uh, understands better by doing both like seeing a video course, making notes and reading a book as well. So choose a particular course for you and uh, basically by uh, from the exam point of view, like uh, what kind of uh, uh, syllabus is there in the exam, in that point of view, choose a particular course. So I have recommended at the end of this video some courses, but this you can um, do some research and find yours as well. If you don't like the recommended ones then uh, step, step two is to first register and set the certification date even if you don't know anything about the course or uh, the spark anything about spark still i would suggest give yourself a deadline because without the deadline you are not going to study you are not going to make a um, uh, fulfill the study plan that you have laid down so if you have a deadline you will uh, anyhow complete uh, your course your study plan before the date so uh, first register and set the certification date then create a weekly learning plan for yourself like if you must be a um, nine nine hours working person then at least two hour daily should be dedicated to your learning routine because uh, if you have a consistency of two hour every day it is going to help you a lot um, and the weekly plan that I have designed is based on this two hour learning only. Then we have the step three is practice. Practice the uh, uh, codes by um, running it on the Databricks notebook or if you have already installed Spark then writing it there. So practice is very important because it helps you um, because there will be questions related to uh, related to codes like there would be scenario based um, codes like uh, four options are given you have to choose which one is correct or you have to there are jumbled uh, codes you have to pick up the right kind of code so uh, it if you practice a lot by writing the codes it is going to be easier in the exam and step four is solving the mock papers so if you are going to appear for the exam solving the mock papers is a must i have another video of recommended uh, sites of mock test 
you can watch that video and solve them so this is step four and step five is very important revise the important topics and solve again the mock papers so once uh, you have solved the mock papers the wrong answers find the topics read about the topics and then solve again the mock papers so this helps in clearing the chances of clearing the exam now this is the exam syllabus so you have uh, your exam in two languages scala or python i have given the exam in python so my recommendation everything is based on python language but you can do your own research there are various materials various courses on scala as well and it's just syntactical difference of codes between scala and python rest architecture and everything all the questions are related and there are 60 multiple choice questions on the certification exam you have to score 70 percent to pass the exam so the basically the syllabus looks something like this you have 17 percent of your questions from spark architecture concepts and 11 percent from applications spark architecture application so a very good understanding of spark architecture very important i have in the weekly plan list down all the topics of the architecture which you should know about before appearing for the exam and also while you are solving the mock papers you'll find out which kind of questions comes like which kind of questions related to architecture comes you should read about that on the spark page or on the web do a google research and go do the google search and read about that topic and clear your doubts 100 percent on spark architecture which is very important and the third one is all the questions related to spark data frame api so knowing everything about uh, data frame api the codes and everything is very important because 72 percent by knowing all the answers of data frame api you can pass the exam it's 72% from that category. So practice the codes uh, very carefully. And also there are, say, suppose if you have a new method which you don't know in the exam, there are test aid provided uh, while solving the mock papers. Refer to the test aid at that time as well because that will help you in the exam as well. There may be times when you get a new method you don't know anything what parameters it takes and all so just uh, look up into the test aid during the exam as well look up in the test aid there is a there is not a control f find button uh, during the exam but you can scroll down and you'd know oh it is in alphabetical order so you'd know where to find that method so that there is that option to understand during uh, to find during the exam and you should practice that before the exam as well that would help then let's see the study plan so i have divided the study plan into two months this is the month one study plan i have noted down each and every topic that comes in the exam so uh, you can find a course having all these topics in one which is not the case every time there are no free courses or paid courses as well which has everything in that so mix your uh, course like where the architecture is very uh, well explained where the data frame methods and uh, everything is explained very well so you can mix up that everything is there in youtube as well or you can directly go and search by these topics and understand about this once you do learn everything about these topics and these you start solving the mock papers solving the mock papers uh, and then revising them will help you clear the exam 100 percent guarantee so this is the plan that i have laid down which actually i have followed as well then I have recommended few courses here and these are free video courses which are available on YouTube. This video has a very good architecture 
information uh, this video has a very good um, practice of data frame how you can do that so this is uh, in one video everything is not there you have to do a mix up study by doing a mix up then here in the paid courses as well like beginners guide uh, it has um, explanation of beginners level architecture and using data frame api spark sql there are um, uh, sections covering them then the advanced has a very good explanation of all the important topics uh, from the exam point of view so like adaptive query execution and those kind of scenarios it doesn't have anything related to data frame so just go through them if you find everything in one video that's very good if not then find one video with a very good explanation of architecture and one video with uh, as a startup guide for pyspark data frame practice i have recommended very uh, very good books Uh, these are the two very good books for spark learning uh, you can start reading them to understand better the spark architecture and um, yeah this uh, last um, site has my video recommended uh, which will explain you the websites where you can solve the mock papers and uh, yes that's all uh, Thank you very much for watching this video till the end. If you like the video then give a like to my video and do subscribe to my channel.